We're going to go ahead and take on a project today from our book. So open to All Things Timpani. All Things Timpani can be located on page 50 of my book. And what we're going to tackle today is the issue of measuring for a timpani head correctly. And I've come up with a tool that you can make that can help you accurately measure and order that head and also be able to level the head when it comes time to leveling the head. This tool will help you do that. And it will also uh, have the ranges for each kettle um, so that you will be able to tune. And so here's the measuring section on page 51. And I'll flip here. Here's the actual tool. There's a wooden version of it and an aluminum version of it. I have both of them in here in the book. It's page 58 and 59. And so I'm going to show you how these uh, are made and talk to you about how they work and how they'll help you. Um, not only help you in your shop, but they'll help you when it comes time for a band director that calls you and says, I need timpani heads and they have no idea what size they are, um, this tool um, will help you help that band director. I'll also share with you that there's a, a portable version of this or a, um, uh, a non-wood or non-aluminum to where they can take it to their band rooms, what I'm trying to uh, say. is something you can give them to take to their band room for, for measuring. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, in this segment, we're going to talk about all the tools and materials and things you're going to need. So uh, first of all, we'll talk about what's here on my red mat. Uh, like I said, on page 58 is the wooden version, and page 59 is the aluminum version. So uh, for the aluminum version, you actually have a couple of options. I bought my aluminum from McMaster Car. A lot of the parts that uh, I'll share with you are all McMaster Car. Um, so I have back here, I have an aluminum version. So this one's not finished yet, but I'm just showing you the, the aluminum. This is quarter inch thick aluminum by one inch wide by three feet long. So that's the silver aluminum version. And the silver aluminum version, the McMaster car number, is uh, 8975K596. And all these different things I'll make sure to post in the bottom of this video. Uh, the other one, I haven't played with it yet, is I bought some black anodized, same dimensions, from McMaster car. And it is number 7083T26. Um, this one right here, this was just my prototype. Uh, I went to the hardware store and got some 8x1 uh, aluminum uh, from, from uh, Home Depot, I think this one, or Ace Hardware. Anyway, 8th eight, eight, uh, inch thick, uh, like I said, the prototype is, is too thin. I had to go to quarter inch but this is my prototype. All right, that's the aluminum. Um, next is just a basic yardstick. As you can see back here, and I'll lift it up a little bit. This is just a uh, Lowe's standard yardstick. And you can make that, make this project out of, out of that yardstick. So that's what we have here. And then in the intro, uh, I was speaking of portable versions of this stick. This is just a paper version that can be uh, made and folded up and handed to a band director. This one here. And then this other one, because again, I'm a percussionist, I have some leftover white drum laminate, what wraps around the outside of the drum, drum wrap. And so I make these also out of the thin laminate to give to band directors for measuring. And um, 
these these here the band directors are really good about it they return them um, you know you you do what what works for you in your shop but these are some uh, portable ones where they can actually take them to their band room lay them across the timpani and uh, get their measurement okay so there's the aluminum there's the wood okay next I'm going to go ahead and, and bring into view here some of the screws that I use. So these are knurled, these are knurled screws, inch and a half long. This is my preferred one uh, in the beginning. This is what I settled on with my tool. Much bigger knurled handle and it actually has a pinpoint tip. Okay, so my preferred one, McMaster car number 9007-9A546. That's my preferred one. And the reason why I preferred it is this tip. When it comes to leveling the head, especially from tension rod to tension rod, that little step gives you a really nice focal point for when it touches the rim. And again, I'll show, I'll show that in another video when it comes to actually leveling the head. We're just worried about making the tool today. And then the knob that will be needed, just a basic brass knob. And again, if you have a lathe, you can turn all these on your lathe if you wish. Um, but the brass knob is a McMaster car number 5125K21. Quarter 20 thread on all of these, uh, inch and a half long, and three quarter diameter knurled knob. So there's the, the knobs, and I'll set that aside. So other things you will end up needing for the project is you'll need a helicoil, quarter 20 helicoil, and you'll need the helicoil if you make the wooden version. You will not need the helicoil if you have the aluminum version. Uh, the aluminum version, obviously, you'll be threading right into the aluminum. Okay, and I'll explain why you need the wood uh, on the, need the helicoil in the wood, pardon me. Uh, the other thing you'll need is you'll need uh, a paint pen or Sharpie of choice. Sharpies, uh, the Sharpie thin point for the wood, okay, the ultra fine or thin point Sharpie. And then the thin paint pens for the aluminum for the markings. So your choice on that okay next things uh, for drilling the hole in the aluminum you'll need a 1364 drill bit so just go ahead and, and you'll get yourself a 1364 drill bit uh, I use a spring punch for punching all my uh, holes you'll need a countersink not necessarily the countersink, but to deburr the aluminum just a little bit so then you can start your thread. And then for the aluminum version, a quarter 20 tap. Okay. All right. So if you don't want to buy anything from McMaster Car, um, so like I said earlier, this is a knob that I made on my lathe. Um, and this is the McMaster car nut. So depending on what you want to do, but an inch and a half has worked the best. It gives you the most, uh, the most throw. Shorter versions, maybe some old drum screws and stuff, they're too short and they don't really work well, whatever they may be. The only thing drum-wise that I've been able to uh, recycle is the tone control knob. If you have an old tone control knob, 
it's long enough so you can use that and thread it they're not quarter 20 they're usually like six millimeter uh, just check it and and change the thread uh, tap accordingly okay but you need at least um, like I said an inch and a half so this is just an old tone control knob I could have used also all right so let's talk about getting started with the wooden one so I'm going to grab a wooden one from the back okay the first thing I did to make room to write on all of the sides of the ruler I had to sand this off so I just used my palm sander and as you can see I started right here and I'm sanding away all of the extra writing that is along the yardstick so you get that all nice and clean you can see I've sanded one right here to demonstrate and show you you're going to sand it all nice and clean here's part way okay so you want to make sure that you uh, clean up your yardstick all right so from there from that point you will start putting your measurements onto the yardstick um, oh I kind of got ahead of myself pardon me we'll need to drill our through hole okay so I got ahead before we do our markings if you get ahead that's fine uh, it's not it's not going to be like super tragic okay so as you can see here's my here's my completed one with the helicoil so I've drilled my 13 64 hole in the wood and with your helicoil kit it comes with a helicoil tap and the insert and the insert tool okay so you drilled your hole you're going to cut your threads into the wood okay once you cut your threads into the wood you then take your helicoil and you thread it into the wood and then what you do is you make sure and I'll hold it on its side and you're going to make sure that the helicoil is evenly on the top and the bottom just make sure it's even then go ahead and take your insert tool out and once you take your insert tool out again you're going to be even and flat and flush on the top and flat and flush on the bottom now the reason why we need to have the helicoil in there is that if we were to use a double nut like I've set up here a nut a quarter inch nut on the top and the bottom the bottom gets in the way of what it's going to be used for in leveling the head so for accuracy we need to be having threads through here so that we don't use a bottom nut but we use the top uh, knob knurled knob to clamp it in place so we don't want that this is why we use the the helicoil in the wood okay so back to here we're, we're flush on the top and flush on the bottom everything's good now to lock this in place just grab your favorite super glue doesn't matter grab your favorite super glue crazy glue and you're going to go ahead and you're going to put a dab of in a circle of crazy glue super glue around the top and the bottom let it set aside to dry and that will lock that helicoil into the wood now what you might have to do after it's dry which I have to do almost every time is a little bit of that super glue gets in the threads 
So I take a quarter 20 thread and just clean the threads out to make it nice and clean and smooth so that the knob will go through. So now everything's nice and smooth. And this is why we don't want that nut on the bottom. We want that knob on the top because now the knob locks our depth for seating and leveling our head across from uh, lug to lug, tension rod to tension rod. Okay, and again, I'll demonstrate that in a, in a different video, the whole leveling and how all this works. Okay, so that's what you're looking for in the wooden one. Okay, all right, so I'll set the wooden ones aside. And we got our Healy coil installed, all that kind of good stuff. You only need that for the wood. All right. Let's talk about aluminum. All right. Same thing. You're going to drill a hole that 1364 and I believe I might have skipped it but you are placing that hole one inch from the one end. So one inch in. So at the 35 inch mark, I have my yardstick laying here next to it. So centered, one inch in. And you'll use your spring punch. You'll drill it. You'll take just a, a light a light bevel with your beveling tool and then go ahead and put your quarter 20 in. Okay? So once you have that in, all threaded and clean and everything, and don't forget to use your cutting oil to help uh, cut your th thread smoothly. Okay? This one I have the narrow on here. You might end up liking the narrow one, just depends. I like the bigger one because I got bigger hands. But again, so now this threads in, and then I can clamp it down with the clamping knob. And as you can see, the reason why is you're going to come through there. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside in the back. All right, let's talk about marking. The marking of the head is going to go, pardon me, flip it, as if you can read it, but I'll at least get it the correct direction. The markings are going to be in correlation with the Evans and Remo numbers. So like for instance, this is the atom section, okay? And if I look at a 20-inch bowl size on an Adams, it is a 2300 on the chart. Okay, so now, if I line this up, you'll see that the 20, that each inch lines up with each mark in its 2100 or 2500 for 25 inch, etc. So what I'm getting at is by, if you look at the Remo chart, it's a 2300. On the Evans chart, it's a 23, meaning that they work together except for Evans drops the zeros. So, here we are. The directions on here, so this is what the band director would get on one of the disposable or portable ones down here, the paper or the drum wrap, set those aside. So they would get this one, and you can remove the head, place the arrow on the outside flesh hoop, with the timpani head rim where my arrow is right there. 
And where this number lines up on the other side is the actual Remo or Evans number that you order. So again, remember, the Evans uses the first two numbers and drops the zeros, and the Remo is the four-digit number. Okay? So there's how they accurately measure. So this, this being the aluminum one, this is in your shop for you to be able to grab and, and do that at a moment's notice. Now, that's one part of the tool. Flipping it over, flipping it over, now you're going to go ahead and use these marks over here when it comes time to go ahead and level the head and tune the head. So on this side, at the 20-inch mark, the 22 and a half, 23, 25, 26, 28, 29, 30, and 32 are all the different tempany, head si uh, tempany bowl sizes. And so now here are all of the ranges. And again, ranges are subject to um, a whole step or a half step difference on the top end or bottom end. But here are your common ranges, OK? In some cases, like here on a 22 and a half, which is a premier timpani, E flat to B flat, I've made that notation in parentheses P, so I remember that that's associated with a premier timpani. And down here on a 20 inch, you have your Ludwig A to D, or you have your Yamaha E to C. So where there's differences, I've notated them, so this is all on one side. So again, you have a tool here that is multifunctional. And we're going to go ahead and pause here. And I'll go to uh, setting up a quick uh, demonstration of how the leveling part works. But I'm not going to go into great detail. But I at least want to attach a sample to this video so that uh, you further understand where this tool is going uh, besides helping with measuring for timpani head uh, size and uh, helping your band directors out. So uh, we'll pause and we'll move over to an actual timpani.